He's conducted more than 5,000 interviews, including every major sports personality, icon, artist, and legend. As host of ESPN's Up Close and HDNet's Face to Face, he's a seven-time Emmy Award-winning broadcaster. Sports Illustrated called the best interviewer in the business, but he's so much more than that. An author of two books, a brand new record album, and a featured role in the motion picture Jerry Maguire. Your father leaves home on Christmas Eve, leaves your family all alone. Had a mother had to sweep out the steps of the prison just to earn enough money for tuition for you. Your brother loses a leg in a tragic bass fishing accident. I mean, there's been a horrific list of things that have happened to you in your life. I'm not going to cry, Roy. <laughs> Well, actually, we have some very good news for you. This has just been handed to me. A memo. It's signed. It's a contract. Guaranteed. Arizona Cardinals, four years, $11.2 million. You're going to get to play in Arizona where it all started, finish up your career in Arizona. What do you think of that? Thank you so much. Congratulations. Congratulations. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Roy Firestone. How we do it for you? Now, I know it's been a little dry here the last hour or so. Great stuff, but a little dry, you'll admit. We're going to have a little fun right now. Is that okay with you folks? Are you all ready to get happy? No, no, no. You got to do better than that. You ready to get happy? Here we go. One. Might seem crazy what I'm about to say. Sunshine, she's here. You can take a break. Come on, put your hands in. Honey, a balloon that could go to space. In the air, I don't care, baby, by the way. Yeah. Because I'm happy. I'm alone if you like a room without a roof Because I'm happy Hop if you feel that happiness is the truth Because I'm happy Hop if you know what happiness does to you Because I'm happy Hop if you feel that that's what you want to do Here come bad news, talk of this and that I will be just fine. Yeah. No offense to you, don't waste your time. Here's why. I belong if you feel like a room without a room. Come on, everybody. I belong if you feel like a happiness is the truth. I belong if you know what happiness is to you. Wanna know. Come on, baby. Come on, Bubba. Don't break me down, cause I'm rising up. Don't break me down, cause I'm rising up. Happy, 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 That's what you want to do Happy lonely if you know What happiness does for you Happy lonely if you know That happiness is the truth Oh yeah One, two, three, four, good afternoon What do we got? Come on up We okay? We got a little, little thing here going on right now. Just got to figure out this little computer system because we have to get this back up for the show. But we'll do that in a second. But my name is Roy Firestone. Thank you for coming, everybody, first of all. Nice hand for all our speakers so far this afternoon. You know, I have uh, had the great pleasure for 
really 25 years. How many, buddy, how many people have seen our show up close on ESPN over the years? Let me hear from you out there, huh? I, I have uh, done so many interviews, 5,000 sports interviews in the course of uh, almost 30 years that people always ask me, who are my favorite guests? Let me start first of all, and you give a nice round of applause, the late, great Wilt Chamberlain. Start off with Wilt Chamberlain. Now, I had never met Wilt Chamberlain before, I guess the year 1978, 79. I had never met him before. I walk up into a restaurant, and there, in a $300,000 white Rolls-Royce convertible, is Wilt Chamberlain in a beautiful car. There are two Dalmatian dogs the size of small horses in the back seat. In the front seat, is a beautiful blonde woman packed into a leather dress because, you know, Wilt felt, right? He felt it was the NBA's all-time leading scorer, but that's a whole different time. Uh, so I said to Wilt, I walk up to him, and I see he is dressed, and this is a true story, silver and purple silk jumpsuit with a wraparound orange tangerine sunglasses, burgundy beret, fluorescent screen, uh, a, a scarf, leather pants, tooled belt, African walking stick. This guy is seven foot three, 345 pounds. I swear to you, I could not believe what I was seeing. Thank you very much. Uh, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was looking at this guy, and he's got a derby, and he's got feathers coming out. I, wa oh, I said, Wilt, Wilt Chamberlain, I can't believe I always wanted to meet you. It would be a great pleasure if you would do my show. He said, Roy, I would love to do your show, but right now, you have to understand, I'm trying to keep a low profile. <clears throat> now, we had so many great guests over the years. I want to talk about a few of them, first of all, and give a nice round of applause for the great Shaquille O'Neal. Give it up for Shaq. <clears throat> I had... <laughs> Shaq is something else. Now, you know him from TBS. You see him on TV, of course, all the years with the Lakers and all these other teams. But he is a giant. Look at the size of this guy, right? I had the, to interview him, though, after the Lakers lost the world championship. They just got beat by the Detroit Pistons for the championship. And, you know, ESPN made me go out there and say, try to get his emotional state. I, don't you hate that stuff? So it's my job. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. The guy is not happy. I walk in. I said, and he's, by the way, not dressed. He's dripping wet from the locker room. And it was something to see. Anyway, so I said, uh, I said, Shaq, obviously you're disappointed. I wonder if you could share your emotional state right now. He goes, well, I'm a little pissed off. Now, here is my beautiful follow-up question. How pissed off are you? He says, to the highest level of passivity. You ask a stupid question, you know. Now, I also, I also had to interview Shaq after the Lakers, you know, forget the Lakers now, the, the team was in the Olympic, Olympics, and the United States Olympic team wins the gold medal. He comes off the plane. I don't know what to say to Shaq, so I said, Shaq, congratulations, first of all, on winning the gold medal. But... When you were in Athens, Greece, did you have a chance to visit the Parthenon? Well, you know, Roy, we went to a lot of clubs. I can't remember all the names. <laughs> now, I have to tell you something. Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant were different spirits, shall we say. They did not get along. By the way, this is them at the happiest time in their career right there. <laughs> I had to interview Shaq about Kobe Bryant once. So I said, Kobe Bryant is a superstar athlete. Jack, obviously you have your own opinions. What's the difference between your personality and that of Kobe Bryant? Shaq looks at me and he swear to you, he says, oh, Roy, we're very different. I said, look at this picture right there. I said, um, you're very different. He goes, that's right. Kobe is much more of a loner than I am. I said, okay. He goes, with me? I'm a, a, I'm one of those, uh, I'm a socialist. <clears throat> Karl Marx is spinning in his grave as we speak. 
Now, I want to tell you about some other interviews I've done. And I, and I have to say that it's been a great ride doing all these fabulous interviews of all these great players. But you, know, you have to understand that most of these people have their own way of doing things. Now, let me give you an example. We had uh, anybody from Houston? Anybody from Houston in the house? A few? OK, right there. Remember when the Houston Rockets had a very diverse lineup? There were like eight different countries in the same lineup. So I have to go to do a story about diversity. And by the way, Voya is a very diverse company. It's great. I think it's a great thing. But I want to do a story about diversity in the NBA. So I go to the Rockets. And I have, as one guest, a person who speaks five languages, soft-spoken, humble, religious, graceful, wonderful human being, humanitarian, Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. And then I wanted to go with somebody completely different, so I went to Charles Barkley. Okay, so here they are. Now, here are the two of them. I swear this is my question. I said, gentlemen, Hakeem and Charles, do you believe you're going to heaven? It's kind of an unusual question, you'll admit, right? Olajuwon has this beautiful, lilting Nigerian voice. Well, Roy, I believe with my spirit to God is pure and consistent, and I give to my community and contribute for all mankind. Yes, 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 yes. I believe I will go to heaven. <laughs> Thank you so very much. I said, nicely said, Hakeem. How about you, Charles? Are you going to heaven? He said, I don't know, but it's definitely going to be a close vote. <laughs> <laughs> we had a guy do our show by the name of Shannon Sharp. You all know who Shannon Sharp is? Nice hand for folks in Denver who might remember Shannon. <coughs> Sh Shannon, by his own admission, Hall of Famer, wonderful human being, not the greatest student of all time. He went to Savannah State University. By the, by the way, there are no Nobel Prize winners coming out of Savannah State University. I said, Shannon, based on your academic career, would you say you might have graduated to the level of magna cum laude? He said, Roy, the fact that I even graduated is thank you, laude. So, uh... Now, always, 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 I have found that in sports, you can learn something from everybody, players, and even coaches. Now, I had a coach do our show by the name of Abe Lemons. I don't know if that name means anything to you folks. Here is Abe. Nice hand for Abe, the late, great Abe Lemons. <coughs> Abe got a technical foul called on him one night. They could use this, by the way, and you're in the financial business, when your clients really push you hard, you know, to the highest level of passivity. You know what I'm trying to say? This is a story you might use. He gets a technical foul called on him one night. Now, if you're the coach, you have one technical foul. Whatever you do, don't get a second technical foul. Do not, whatever you do, offend the referee. But sure enough, horrible call. He gets really ticked off, you know? He goes, hey, Raph, referee, come over here for a second. He says, Raph, listen, I got one technical foul. I cannot afford to get a second technical foul. So what I'm about to ask you, well, let, me, let me ask it this way. Would you give me a second technical foul for something I'm just thinking? <laughs> Referee says, I can't give you a technical foul for something you're thinking. He goes, good, I'm thinking you're some of a bitch. I'll tell you right now. <laughs> you can use that, by the way, in your... <laughs> and of course, everybody says to me, well, who is your most unforgettable, the most eccentric of all the interviews? There's no second place, folks. It's this guy right here. By the way, many of his great moments were about 40 feet from here, I might add. Mike Tyson. Remember the first time you heard him speak? And you thought there might be something wrong with the audio on your television? It was one of those, a left, a right, another left, and another right, and it's all over, it's all over. There's a new heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Oh my God, I feel powerful. I feel, I feel extraordinary. I had the press for Cassidy. I hit him with a left hand and right hand. He went down like a sack of potatoes. Where's the fight? Where's the fight? You know. Now, I have to tell you something. I, I had so many great people come on our show, but one guy was going to fight Mike Tyson. You might even remember the name, Michael Spinks. 
Now, Michael Spinks, this is the, the poster for the fight. You could, Michael Spinks looks terrified in the poster, right? So Michael Spinks comes on my show, and I said, he's two weeks before the fight. I said, Michael Spinks, you're fighting Mike Tyson in two weeks. Let me ask it to you this way. Are you concerned about your way in? He said, no, man, I'm concerned about the way out. So I knew. <laughs> now, this was an amazing fight. It was in New Jersey, and it was in Atlantic City. The fight didn't last long, but first, let me tell you about the pre-fight instructions. I'm sitting at ringside, and Richard Pryor is three seats down from me, and we're listening to the pre-fight instructions. I swear to you, the referee's giving the instructions, and I see Mike Tyson staring into Michael Spinks like this. And he goes, tonight, I'm going to beat the crap out of you. And Michael Spinks looked at him and said, I know. <laughs> The fight starts, and it ended very quickly. <laughs> this was it. The first punch, I'd never seen anything like it. The fight was over in 90 seconds. Tom could figure out to 90 seconds against Mike Tyson. The fight's over. Now, here's where it's really unbelievable. I'm running from the ring because I want to get to the press room because you want to be in, in a good row for the press conference, right? So I'm running, and I hear there's a commotion right behind me. I turn around and this is what I see. Right behind me is Mike Tyson and six of his handlers. Mike Tyson looks at me and he goes, oh my God, it's Roy Fyfe down. How are you, Roy? What's going on? Like, like I'm in a freaking mall. He says, I, I, I don't believe I'm seeing you here. I was watching your show last week. You just knocked this guy dead 90 seconds ago, right? I saw the show last week your father was on. He was a very, very knowledgeable expert on boxing. I really enjoyed the show. Will you give him my very best? My father hated Mike Tyson's guts. I get to a payphone, <laughs> true story. I call my father, it's 11 o'clock at night. I said, Pop, you're not gonna believe what happened. What, what, what? I said, I'm at the Tyson. He goes, Tyson, that son of a, he should be, I said, Dad, wait, wait, wait. I said, Pop? Mike Tyson just gave you the greatest compliment of the world. He said he watched the show you were on last week. He thought you were fabulous. And I got to tell you, he said he wanted me to give you his best. My father, without missing a beat, goes, well, you know, he's quite a warrior, too. He's one of the great champions we've ever had. <laughs> this is my father, ladies and gentlemen, right there. So. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I still believe to this day there was only one truly great champion in the boxing. And we don't see much boxing anymore. And you know who that is. It's this guy. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen, the great. And we'll be back with him a little bit later. But, and of course, the greatest broadcaster of all time was who? This guy, Howard Cosa. Do you, yeah, go ahead. Do you know how many people, how many people these days don't even know who Howard Cosell is? I see it all the time. Let me give you an idea. For those who don't know who Howard Cosell and Muhammad Ali were together, together, they were like sports first rap group. Really. In fact, here's the way it would sound if Howard Cosell and Muhammad Ali were rappers. It would sound like this. Hello, everybody. I'm Howard Cosell. Without further ado, there's the opening bell. We're here today to view and observe a three-time champ with a hell of a nerve. He fought all comers with speed and savvy, though in later years, he got kind of flabby. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali. Howard Cosell, I hear what you say. You full of hot air, you got a bad toupee. I fought with style, I fought with class. You ain't nothing but a pain in my ass. There it is, Howard Cosell and Muhammad Ali. Now, I have, uh, I, I have an idea that many of you are golfers. Let me hear, applaud for the golfers. Let me hear the golfers in the house. I want to give you now my dissertation on why golf is indeed a four-letter word. Watch. I've got golf under my skin. 
I have got golf deep, deep in the heart of me. Woo! So deep in my heart that it's really not smart of me. Cause I've got golf under my skin. Now I've tried so very hard to play, but I never can win. I said to myself that this game, it never will go so well. But why should I try to quit when baby I know it so very well? Cause I've got golf, said I've got golf under my skin. Woo! I would sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of hitting that putt. But it's always the same, the play in the game. Golf's a royal pain in the butt. I just know I'm some kind of fool, and I don't know where to begin. Use your mentality and lose most of your salary. Oh, but every time I do, from out of the blue, I just stop before I begin. Because I've got golf under my skin. Now, these are the drivers that are not in the club. Not the driving kind of club, the actual cart drivers. Look at this guy trying to pull a wheelie right there. Oh, watch all these great golfers and get back to me right here. International golf. Watch this guy, this is a great follow through right here. Woo! Now you always have to watch where you step when you're in the bunker, like right here, don't step on the rake. Oh, that would be a mistake right there. <laughs> All right, here we go. I would sacrifice anything, come what might, for the sake of hitting that putt. But it's always the same. Golf's playing the game. It's a royal pain in my butt. <laughs> Don't you know, you crazy fool? You ain't never gonna win. Use your mentality. Oh, don't lose your salary. Oh, but every time I do, from out of the blue, I just stop before I begin. Because I've got golf, got golf right here in the keister, lady, right there in the butt. Ooh, that one hurts. Yes, I dig golf. This is an actual birdie on the 19th hole right there. Under my skin. There it is, golf under my skin, everybody. <laughs> Let me get a little water here. Uh, how many people are going to be watching? I assume everyone's watching the Super Bowl this weekend, right? All right. How many Eagle fans do we have tonight? How many New England Patriot fans do we have here? I'm a Miami Dolphin fan. I haven't been in the playoffs in about 100 years. But uh, I want to talk about, you're going to see something in this Super Bowl, I promise you, because now the new thing is the celebrations in the end zone. You see these, these devious things that they're doing, all these different things where they're shaking the ball and they're rolling the thing. But I'm going to show you some of the most unusual celebrations in sports history. And let's start with a soccer player by the name of Dimitri Kub. This is a Lithuanian soccer player, and he hits the ball with a header into the goal. Very nice. Now, you'd think he'd take a bow, maybe acknowledge the fans. No. He goes into the stands, sits down, and applauds his own goal. That is what you call cocky. But it is not the cockiest I've ever seen. In fact, we call this piece Premature Celebration. Celebrate, celebrate. It starts with graduation. Celebration? Uh, not so fast. Uh, when you're a kid celebrating a slam dunk, you sometimes can end in a funk. Ooh. 
in horse racing, the object is to win the race and to not make an ass out of yourself. But let's face it, some jockeys seem to make an ass out of themselves all the time right there. Now, uh, the goalie in soccer loves to con congratulate himself after a great save. Unfortunately, this was not one of them. Look at that. Unbelievable. A walk-off home run? They're great. But if you don't touch home plate, you're out. He didn't. He should have won the game. He misses home plate. They lose that game. In cycling, you can't celebrate before you win. This guy falls completely apart, and the number two rider wins the race easily. I just want to celebrate. <laughs> Here's an inline skater so busy congratulating himself, he doesn't see the competition. Hint, hint, hint. Look at that. Now, hockey goals are great, unless there's too much to celebrate, like here. Here is an amazing piece of tape. I've never seen this. This soccer coach, high-fiving no one, separates his shoulder. I have never, ever seen that in the history of sports. Look at this. They had to take him to the locker room. No one even touched him. Now, look at this guy. Sometimes you could celebrate and look like an idiot no matter what you do. But you know what? This is one. The fans are not always your fans. Look at this. <laughs> Here's a horse race where the jockey comes out of the irons to acknowledge his win, but too bad he was looking the wrong way and he didn't win. But my favorite, oh, unbelievable, my favorite premature celebration. This is a college game. This guy hits an apparent game in winning jump shot, but there's still 0.6 seconds left. Everybody says, get back on defense. The coach is telling his team to play defense, but too late because they didn't pay attention and jubilation becomes humiliation. When you get too cocky, folks, you could get smacked right in the face. There's a lesson to be learned, everybody. We have now a, a, a part of our show where we want to acknowledge some of our great executives, and uh, we have so many people here to do. How about a nice hand for once again for Charles, who is just out there. Come on, give a nice hand for Charlie. Charlie Nelson, CEO of retirement. Now, you probably said, you know, I, I heard his speech. He was fi fine and everything, but he, he didn't have necessarily the charisma of, say, a Sinatra, right? Would you agree with that? But, you know... He's, he's a huge fan of Sinatra, Charlie is. As a matter of fact, if you look carefully, there's a tremendous resemblance. Here's Sinatra. Imagine Charlie Nelson as Frank Sinatra. It might look like right there. He, pretty, pretty stylish, don't you think? Ladies and gentlemen, here is Charles Nelson as Frank Sinatra. Well, actually, just Frank Sinatra in general, singing one of Charles Nelson's favorite songs from the village people. Here is Frank Sinatra doing a village people song. Let me give you a little more sound up here, please. Young man, I was once in your shoes. I said, old man, I once had the blues. I know there's a place you can go. And it's even better when you're hanging out with Charlie Nelson in the Voya Disco. Two, three, four. YMCA YMCA You can't do anything It's your personal choice Hey Charlie, you want to hang out with all your voyeur boys right here In Charlie Nelson's YMCA YMCA There it is, Frank Sinatra, everybody Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little sip of this water here. Mm. How about a nice hand for, uh, from Vienna, Virginia, a big Pats fan, Jonathan Kurtz is in our house tonight. Come on, give a nice hand for Char Jonathan. There you go. Kind of a subtle picture there. Uh, Jonathan, of course, uh, if you look carefully, you can see this is clearly a Motown guy, kind of a smooth jazz guy. Jonathan always grew up, his hero was the king of Motown, Mr. Smokey Robinson. Now, if you put Jonathan Kurtz and Smokey Robinson together, you get somebody that looks a little bit like this right here. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Smokey Robinson!
And everybody, can you do a little more house? A little more in the monitor, please. There we go. Thank you very much. We have so many great people here in this company, and I, and I do want to acknowledge too that uh, it's a very diverse company too, uh, men and women. Very, very much active and figured in the executive branch. Uh, nice hand for Holly Kylan. Where's Holly in our house? Give it up for Holly. That's uh, Kylan Financial. Now, you may not know this, but back in the 70s, way before this era, Holly was actually one of the great disco queens of her area. In fact, we have a picture from it back in, I guess it's circa 1975. There she is right there. She loved the music of the Bee Gees. Y'all Bee Gees fans? Here they are, the Bee Gees! Good night. like a woman Woo! lonely days lonely nights I'm so glad Holly is a woman there it is for Holly Kylie and there it is <coughs> uh, Doug Cote is here give it up for Doug come on you look at this picture and you say clearly that's an Olympic athlete. <sighs> Maybe not, but you may be surprised to know this, that Doug was one of the most decorated swimmers of all time in Olympic history. I don't know if you knew this. In fact, we have a picture in Cover of Sports Illustrated uh, many, many years ago. Here it is right there. Not bad. But as great as he is, Doug Cote, our Voya chief marketing strategist, there's nobody quite like Frank Acosta. Now. Where's Frank in our house? Give it up for Frank, everybody. Come on, give it up. Here he is do, doing one of his, he has 30 mile hikes every day. Incredible. He's telling me in the lobby before what an athlete he is. And I looked it up, and sure enough, Frank Acosta was a great Olympic diver. You may not believe it, but I looked at the clip. The year was 1992. Watch. The whole world was watching when Frank Acosta was there in Beijing, China. The whole planet was had their eyes fixed on Frank Acosta as he went to the top of that ladder, spun it up more than thousands of feet high, a little scratch on the ass, and Frank Acosta, there he is, with the bathing cap on. Look at this, the dismount, the roll, the tuck. Look at the body. Look at the incredible physical physique. The roll again, and there it is. 
He hits the water at 110 miles an hour. Frank Acosta from Acosta Insurance. Look at the scores for Frank Acosta. A perfect 10, everybody. Give it up for Frank Acosta. Yeah. We got one more. Now, we just, we just heard from Tom Haller. Give a nice hand once again for Tom, our president. Dashing guy, talking big, big, big Boston fan, big New England Patriots fan, Red Sox fan, Bruins fan. You may not know this, and he just has announced his retirement. Neil Diamond is, is retiring. Did you hear that this week? But Tom Halloran is going to be standing in for many of his shows during the tour. He gets dressed up like Neil Diamond. This happens very frequently. In fact, we have a picture of Tom. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. What do you think? Give it up. What do you think for Tom? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. The great Neil Diamond! All the people around the world They come to America And they come with their flag unfurled Who oh, come to America And they come with a singular joy Welcome to America, and Tom Halloran is your boy, he comes to America, my country, tis of thee, I'm glad Tommy Halloran works for me, oh the I see. today, there it is for Tom and for all of them, give him a nice hand. <laughs> our executive committee here today. I, I, I do want everybody to know that we have a, a story for you today that's sort of a serious story, but it's also inspiring. Uh, I've covered so many things in sports in the last uh, 25 years. I don't think I've ever been around a sports story that moved me and so many millions of people quite like this one. And you know, one of the themes that we have for Voya is making a difference. Make a difference not just in your business, but in life, and you do, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But this is a story of how a coach really made a difference in a young person's life. And we call this taking your best shot. Because sometimes in life, the biggest moments come in the smallest places. This is Greek Athena High School in Rochester, New York. It is the home to a five foot five inch team basketball manager named Jason McKelwain. Now, Jason is autistic. One out of every 50 boys in this country now are autistic. It can ostracize a lot of kids, make them feel different and different from all, all the other kids, but not this young man. He found a way to make a difference in his own life. Get him life. motivated and uh, hand out water and just be enthusiastic. Let's have a hard practice tomorrow, all hour and a half, and let's get ready for Arcadia. Yeah, okay. Let's go. One, two, yeah, three, two. The second of the last day of the season, his coach, Jim Johnson, that man right there, decides to give this young man a chance to make a difference. He lets him suit up for the final game of his career in high school. Now this young man never even bounced the ball. He never even had a moment in high school, but he lets him get in the game with the team well ahead with four minutes to go. Now ladies and gentlemen, in Rochester, New York, they had little masks for J-Mac, but they didn't expect much to happen. And in fact, not much did happen at first. Was it close? Did you almost make I missed, it? I just airballed it. <laughs> I'm like, just dear God, please, let's just get him a basket. Next shot was no good, but then something really good did happen. J-Mac hit this shot, and it changed everything, ladies and gentlemen. It converted his heart and his soul overnight. If I wasn't there to witness it, I wouldn't have believed it, you know. You caught fire. It just caught fire. I was hot as a pistol. Well, that, po that pistol got hotter. J-Mac hits this shot here, and Jason hits this shot here. And then he hits another three-pointer here. Ladies and gentlemen, this young man scored six three-pointers in a minute and a half. And he ended the game at the buzzer with a 34-foot NBA three-point shot. How do you explain that? You know, ladies and gentlemen, when you think about your work and your business and making a difference, you saw what that coach did in making that young man's life different. As the fans rough, rushed that court, we found out there's a difference. It's not just the love of the game, it's really the love in the game. The J-Mac story. <clears throat> 
and I, I, and I want to make a point here today with all the fun that we're having, that Voya is an incredible company. I don't just say that because I'm here as some sort of hired hand, but I've done some research, and I wanted to do a little piece about what you folks do to make a difference with that in mind, and it goes like this. You know, these days, so many of us feel divided as a people for any number of reasons, but what brings us together is our commonalities, our ability to reach into our hearts and share what we know and what we do with someone who can use it. So when I first researched Voya, I was most impressed with the fact that this is a company that makes giving back a priority. Recently, the Voya National Day of Service program contributed more than 13,000 hours of service to communities. That breaks down to 40 paid hours by Voya for its full-time employees to give back, and that is also 100% participation from the executive committee because it is your culture of giving that makes you special. And whether it's honoring unsung heroes in the community or saluting the teacher of the year. This year, by the way, marks Voya's 14th consecutive year supporting the National Teacher of the Year, the program which recognizes excellence in the classroom and highlights the important positive impacts that skilled teachers can have in the lives of the students and amplifies and empowers teachers' voices. Voya shows that it's much more than a financial company. Its main component is heart. Last year, Voya employees volunteered more than 50,000 hours availing themselves to the communities it served, raised more than $5 million in the annual giving programs, and their investment in the Special Olympics with the social media campaign in November. It helped raise funds for the Special Olympics and raised awareness of the disability community. It was such a success, they increased their expectation by 88%. As a result, Voya will donate more than half a million dollars this year to the Special Olympic programs across the country. You should be very proud of that. The Voya Cares programs showed the financial planner, John Kurtz, who we mentioned that his son, who happens to be autistic, that Voya was there for him and others with special needs. Thankfully, through Voya, they started this program, Voya Cares, and it's really uh, helped me learn even more for what I can do, certainly not only for my child, but for clients. You are in the investment business, of course, but I think your investment in your community and service to your fellow man gives all of you a feeling that you're part of the love, support, and honor to make people feel different, feel better. And that's a hell of a lot more than just a bank account. God bless you, Voya. I do so many of these shows around the country, and I'm always amazed that every time I do a new show, we're dedicating yet another great moment in sports that, that people can't possibly feel that they'll ever be matched. But every week and every month, it seems like there's another great moment. What I'm about to show you, ladies and gentlemen, is a little song that you know very well, very famous song, and we put a lot of video and pictures to it, and it's dedicated to the reason that many of you love sports so much, it may not have been even your favorite team player, but if you see somebody on the screen that you loved and admired, I'd love to hear you give a rousing round of applause and cheer. Don't ever let the sun go down on your dream. Don't ever give up and watch this video. Derek Jeter, first of all. A nice hand for Derek Jeter. Let's give it up. I can lie, cause I love all my yesterday. LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, and all my pictures. Kirk Gibson seemed to fade to black and white. Michael Jordan! I'm growing tired And time stands still before me The late, great Walter Payton, everyone Wayne Gretzky Frozen heat On the ladder of my life Of my life Serena Williams Peyton Manning don't let the sun go down on me. Although it's dreams for you, it's really your reality. It's just another fragment of your life. 
the Women's World Cup Soccer Champs. You want to free, but losing everything. Mike Trout, he like the sun going down on me. The miracle on ice. Do you believe in miracles? The 1980 Olympics. And you know this guy, Steph Curry. Look at this shot. Oh, I can't fight. Oh, the right romantic lines. Kobe Bryant ends his career with a 61-point game. But see me once. Oh, and see the way I feel. Ohio State beats Michigan for you Buckeye fans. Don't discard me. Alabama wins it again. Just because you think I mean you hard. Clayton Kershaw with a no-hitter. But those cuts I have, will they need love? You Minnesota Viking fans will never forget this one. They need love to see them through. Don't let the sun go down on me. Although it's dreams for you, it's really your reality. Michael Phelps, it's just another fragment of your life. You want to free the late great Arnold Palmer, everybody, and Jerry Rice. But losing everything is like the sun going down on me. Clemson wins the national title on the last play. Oh, 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 don't let the sun, Muhammad Ali, go down on me. Oh, though it's dream for you, Mario and Larry Bird and Magic. It's just another fragment of your life. You want to free. The Kings with the title on the last play. But losing everything is like the sun going down on me. Simo Biles, great champion. Ho, ho. The Philadelphia Eagles go to the Super Bowl. And the New England Patriots are doing it too. Don't let the sun go down on me. Uh. Hope you've enjoyed our show so far today. A uh, couple more pieces of business. I, I was talking to Tom before. Uh, this is a piece that I do in every show. Uh, it's my favorite story, and it's a true story, folks. When I was 21 years old, starting out in the business, this man was the first person I ever interviewed. It starts with an A, alphabetically, and from a human humanitarian standpoint, too, he is Muhammad Ali. By the way, the man is holding his daughter, that is Layla Ali, she ended up being a heavyweight champion for women as well and empowering women all over the globe. This picture, by the way, I couldn't make this photo up because look at the hair. You know I couldn't Photoshop that, right? The reason I tell you this story, folks, is about, oh, I guess 40 years later, we were doing a, bet, a fundraiser for Parkinson's disease, and this was the night that Muhammad Ali and I shared the stage together all those years later. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason I bring this up is because of his presence, certainly not mine, and people like Reba McIntyre and David Foster and Josh Groban, Muhammad Ali that night helped raise $7 million in 10 minutes for Parkinson's. It is truly one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen. <clears throat> I miss Muhammad Ali every day. I knew him since I was a kid. And I'm going to share with you a story that is a true story to me, and I experienced it. You must believe that this is the one that I really gets me every time I tell it, but it's true. One, I guess one or two days after that first picture you saw, 
we went, uh, went on a tour with our camera crew to a nursing home in South Beach, Florida. You talk about making a difference, that Voya wants you to understand what making a difference means. This man made a lot of difference. He walked into the room, into this nursing home. There were about 150 elderly people, people into their 90s, well past retirement, and just hanging on. Many of them couldn't see well or hear well, but Ali walked into the room. I'm the greatest. I'm the fastest. Can nobody whoop me? What is my name? No reaction. <laughs> in fact, an old Jewish lady in the front went, aren't you clay? That didn't go over well. But uh, <laughs> we go to the other room, and Ali's bouncing around. There's six people in his entourage. They're all jumping around. He goes into another room. I am the greatest what? And he sees there's only one person in the room, and he's in a wheelchair. It's an elderly black man, about 97 or 98 years old. And Ali shuts up for a second. And he takes a knee. I'll never forget this. And he saw this old man and he said, hey, old man, do you know who I am? Nothing. No reaction. Man just looked straight ahead, barely batted an eye. I was told later he was going to be 98, couldn't see, couldn't hear and more or less given up, Ali tries it again. Oh, man, what's my name? No reaction. Well, Ali's mildly disappointed, but he gets up, and he starts to walk with his entourage, and they're walking out. Now, folks, I'm over here with the old man, and I see this brilliant, wonderful thing happen. Like a light bulb went off in his head. His eyes got bright. He took the wheelchair and started to turn it, and then first haltingly, but then with more conviction, he spoke. Hey. What? Hey. Hey, what? Hey. I know who you are. You know who I am. Ollie walks back, takes the knee again. Who am I? Old man spoke. Hadn't spoken in weeks. You the champ of the world, man. You know my whole life. All I ever wanted to do was meet the champ because he make me proud. He make me feel good about who I am. He's the greatest. He never do no wrong, never do nothing bad. That's what makes the champ, and that is why you are the greatest of all time. We were blown away. Ali had a tear in his eye. He looked at this old man and said, you right, old man. I am the champ. And now tell everybody in this room, what is my name? Old man looked up and said, Joe Lewis. Every, every member of Ali's entourage were horrified. They raced to Ali, and then they raced to the old man. They said, hey, old man, don't you know what you're talking about? That ain't, a, that ain't Joe. And Ali stopped them. What are you doing? But he said your name was, I know what he said, I could hear. He walks back with these members of his entourage, and I was within earshot, and I'm going to share with you what he said, and you will never forget it. He said, how dare you? How dare you correct an old man? How dare you try to take a man's dignity away? You heard what he said. His dream came true tonight. The only champ you ever wanted to meet was Joe Lewis. Well, guess what? His dream came true tonight. And do you know why? And then he said it, folks. Tonight, my name is Joe Lewis. Wow. What a moment. I realized what this man was saying in his own way. And you people are in the retirement business. You know what dignity is. You know what uplift is. A champion is someone who uplifts another human being. I say to you now, ladies and gentlemen, uplift somebody in your community, in your place of work, in your place of worship. Uplift somebody in small or big ways. Do it. Like he did every single day when he was alive, he uplifted somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, Muhammad Ali was showing us the essence of what a champion is all about. Giving, 
availing yourself. Arthur Ashe said, that what you earn makes you a living. That's what you give makes you your life. And George Washington Carver, who preceded Arthur Ashe by, I don't know, 50 years, said it this way, how far all of you go in your life depends upon your ability to be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, tolerant of the weak and the strong, and patient with those who strive. Because someday in your life, you will have been all of those things too. Uplift somebody like this man did. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, to me, he'll still be the greatest of all Well, I have, I have had an absolute ball doing the, these shows, and I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you have, you had fun today. I hope you have a little bit. <laughs> I want to do a, I wanted to do a kind of a summation of what Voya is, is about, and uh, I wanted to try to do it with a little bit of style and panache. So I thought maybe we would do something that would maybe be kind of a poem, kind of a song, and that's why I wanted to do it like, Maybe Johnny Cash doing an ode to Voya? What do you think? What do you think? You want to hear a little Johnny Cash? It goes like this. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this song's dedicated to Voya Financial. Great people doing great work. It goes like this. Howdy, folks from far and near. Mighty glad to have you here to celebrate our cherished company. Empowering folks throughout the land. Giving them a helping hand with services and products, that's the key. Clever folks and roll with Voya, skip retirement paranoia, and heave a great big sigh of pure relief. Free from hype and hocus pocus, Voya keeps its goals in focus, keeping clients safe and free from grief. Now we don't wave a magic wand, we just forge a lasting bond between our clients and our super staff. And hereby let it be revealed, each one's an expert in their field. I wish the hell I had their autograph. With programs such as Voya Cares, we're not just bucks and market shares. We're giving back as many folks will tell. We all strive to be inclusive, and we advocate the use of eco-friendly business practices as well. Now let us congratulate some Voya folks we think are great, without whose tireless efforts we'd be toast. In each and every level, we got angels, not one devil. We, we had the time to give them one a boast. Now let's start with Holly Kylan. She'll always leave you smiling with those little orange cups all the time. Here's Miss Timbers Marilyn. At Christmas, she goes Carolyn. Oh, maybe not. I just really had to find a rhyme. <clears throat> Maggie Dietrich, no relation. Larry Rosenthal, sensation. Andre Robinson, the joker of the bunch. Miss Malucci, first name Laura. Ain't she got that certain aura? Or maybe it was a three martini lunch. And that brings us to our bosses. We don't need to cut our losses, cause these folks have led us well and made us grow. Here's a shot of Rodney Martin. Worked his way from kindergarten, all the way to being Voyage CEO. Our executive committee, you could point out that it's pretty. Gender balance with five women and six men. And there's no one that we hate, cause we don't discriminate. That's the way we really make things great again. I could mention many more. We got officers galore, and they all deserve some kudos and applause. Some are Caesars, some are Neros, but they all are superheroes, and each one is dedicated to our cause. So it's obvious to all, boy is strong and standing tall, and our people are the best that they can be. Making customers secure, there's no doubt that we are for sure. America's Retirement Company! There it is! You like that? Johnny Cash. <laughs> All right, before we go, I, I want everybody to know we have a lot more show to coming up. It's going to be a great, great next few days. Uh, I do want people to know that at the end of this show and when we're in the lobby, we're going to offer for you folks a chance to meet and greet. We're also going to offer our book. We're going to offer the book for a $20 donation. And we're also going to offer our CD, our musical CD, that I just produced with a, a Grammy Award-winning band. 
And we, if you buy one of these books or CDs, we're going to donate our, our money to benefit the Red Cross for hurricane relief. There's a lot of people still hurting in this, on this planet. And if you'd like to be part of it, we'll be right outside signing books and CDs. And I hope you come by. You don't have to buy anything if you don't want to. Take a picture if you'd like. It would be great to meet all of you. I hope you've enjoyed the show thus far. So. But before we go, one last piece. This is dedicated to all that know that there is a difference between success and happiness. Many of you are successful. So many of you are happy, but not all of you. The difference between success and happiness is this. Success is getting what you want, but happiness, which is far more elusive, is wanting what you've got. I hope you have success and happiness, and remember that no matter how hard life could be, that's life. This is dedicated to you. Thanks for coming, everybody. I say that's life. That's what people say. You're flying high in April. You get dumped on in May. I know, I know I'm never going to change my tune when I'm flying high. Flying high in June. I say that's life. Funny as it seems. Sometimes you want to kick, oh, right in someone else's dream. But don't you ever, never let it get you down. Cause this old world keeps spinning around. Cause I've been a hitter, a kidder, a lover, a sinner, woo, a fool and a king. I've been up and down and over and out. But you know one thing, every time I think I fall on my face, I pick myself up and get my mama in his face. And she's got a shoe. I say that's life. I can't deny it. Sometimes I want to fight, but you know my heart can't try it. But if you didn't think it was worth a try, you just get up in the air and fly. Because I've been slapped and smacked and slammed and whacked. I've been bit by a horse. I've been up and down and over and out but you know of course every time i get a pie in my face get myself up and get back in the race yeah i say that's life i can't deny it Sometimes I want to fight, but you know my heart can't try it. And if you didn't see, it would pull you down. Don't pull it down, Eric. You pick yourself up, come on, and get off your butt. You pick yourself up and say, hey, hey, that's life. Oh, bye-bye. Bye-bye, Boya. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Boya. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you outside. One more time, Roy Firestone.